Data of every description will pervade our consciousness. Holograms projected beneath our eyelids. Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hey, my name is Carly, and I've been involved as a volunteer with the museum since 2017. I was the woman behind the camera in the DCC documentary, and chances are, if you bought a battery for your portable, it was probably made by me. Since I've been in college, it's been very difficult to stay hands-on with the museum, so I usually run the social media accounts. But in college, I'm studying to be in the forensic field, which is why you see me here today instead of my father, Dr. DCC. The DCC deck that we're going to be talking about today is actually one of our greatest discoveries. It's a forensic playback DCC that's custom made by JBR Technology. It uses a 9 plus 2 magneto-resistive playback head to allow for previously erased media to be audible again. In some cases, confessions were recorded on answering devices, dictaphones, or regular decks, and then they'd be intentionally or accidentally deleted. This JBR technology is a custom deck built around a Philips DCC 900. So how did this all begin and how did we get a hold of this technology? Well, in order to answer that, we have to take you back to 2020 when the story began. We saw on eBay that somebody listed a Philips DCC 900, and now what the seller may not have known is that all of these have an issue with the leaking capacitors when plugged in. He said in the listing that everything was perfect, hadn't been used, it was still in box. So we reached out, we let him know about the leaking capacitor problem, and he thanked us. He informed us that he actually had 12 of the same new in box units. This really piqued our interest because Dr. DCC hadn't seen anything like that since the 90s. So we told him our story and what we do at the museum, and we were actually able to obtain all 12 units from him along with six mechanisms. When the shipment arrived, we were really surprised to see the modifications done on those mechanisms. We could see two distinctive modifications. The first is that there were cables soldered to the board. And the second were these four pegs, which really made us think, why? These modifications were done by JBR Technology, a company owned by former FBI Special Agent James Reams. The career of James at the FBI spanned over nearly four decades as he started his career in the J. Edgar Hoover era. He was mostly involved within working and running the audio lab. He was responsible for developing the Nagra tape recorders type SNST and JBR for field recording used exclusively by government agencies worldwide. He was honored at NAGRA with adding his initials to the last NAGRA JBR recorder, as those stand for James B. Reams. After his retirement from the FBI in 1990, he started JBR Technology, which provided forensic services in the audio field to law enforcement and the legal community. Several phone interviews were conducted over a three-year period with James as health and COVID issues prevented us from meeting him. Hopefully, an interview on camera will be possible in the future. When James read about the Philips DCC technology and the magneto-resistive heads, he immediately realized that this would be usable in audio forensics. Magneto-resistive heads are able to read regular analog tape at 60 decibel versus normally 20 decibel. By modifying an existing Philips DCC 900 with 11 unique outputs directly from the read-write board to a custom-built amplifier, analog tapes that had very weak signal were able to be made audible again. The custom DCC deck by JBR Technologies was honored by a special episode on NCIS Miami that aired on March 29, 2004. Because of copyright issues, we will include a link to this specific part where the deck is used in this episode in our video description as well, and a link can be found here. If we open up the player that was damaged by a very bad UPS delivery driver, by the way, you can see that the player is far from complete. This was a very early already used for parts prototype. You can see the 900 mainboard mechanism and display. The buttons are modified and there is a new power supply as well. There are a few switches being reused, others are disabled. The speed control would have normally made a connection to this part of the mechanism. The output gain would have been connected to the custom-built amplifier on the back of the mechanism. We do not have that part. If analog tapes is erased, there is a chance that the DCC magneto-resistive head could still retrieve audio. Successful recovery and playback depend on a small, short, sliver magnetic signal, remnant track, being left on the erase tape caused by misaligned record and or erase heads, misaligned tape guides, 
misaligned capstan slash pinch roller, dirty head resulting in an incomplete erase, defective erase head, weak erase head and or weak erase oscillator for the tape being used. A perfectly erased tape will not have enough material to work with. Most tapes are never perfectly erased though. 11 magneto resistant tracks are used, 8 playheads, 1 auxiliary track, and 2 regular analog heads. The tracks are so close together that any remaining info could be read from the analog tape. James built the modified machine successfully and ran the signal from the back of the unit to a PC running Sonic Foundry Vegas Pro software and imported the separate channels coming from the DCC900. The software could modify the channels by adding or deleting tracks, leading to a new, now audible signal. In this example, you can see where track 8 has audio information lacking on the other tracks. JBR Technologies sold several of these units to law enforcement agencies. That is also the reason for the spare part mechanisms. Audio labs with law enforcement used to demagnetize their heads. They sometimes continue to do so with the DCC deck and therefore ruined the head. Demagnetizing any DCC head is almost instantly killing it. Several known cases have been solved by the JBR DCC deck. One came to mind during the interview. A confession recorded on tape during interrogation was by mistake swapped in a cassette duplicator. Instead of duplicating the confession to an empty tape, the empty tape was mistakenly used as the master, and as a result copied empty information to the slave copy. There was no audible signal left, and it almost changed the outcome of the entire trial, as the later convicted murderer changed his testimony to not remembering his confession and pled not guilty. He was convicted based on the audio restored by using the JBR machine. There was also an attempt made with perhaps the most famously erased tape in history, the Nixon tapes. We have here the original report from the 70s. In the early 2000s, a handful of companies were asked to try and solve the mystery around the minutes missing from the Nixon tapes. JBR was one of them. As reel to reel was used originally, it could be used in the JBR DCC deck, but JBR Technologies proposed a development of a 200-track magneto-resistive head based on the DCC thin film technology being able to read the reel-to-reel -reel tape. The budget for this was not okayed. None of the companies were successful for the simple reason that the original tape remained in the vault at the White House, and the companies were only given a copy. It is impossible to regain any material from a copy. Considering the luck we had finding this piece of technology, we hope to one day find the complete version, but the chances are pretty slim considering government agencies probably dispose of them. Anyway, that's all for today, and goodbye!